Hello, welcome to a new Growing Down episode with our guest, Stephanie Lepp. She is the podcaster for Infinite Lunchback, Lunchbox and Reckonings, also a research affiliate at the Institute for the Future. Welcome to the podcast, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you all. So one of my first questions right off the bat is, uh, as short or as long as you want to make it, um, can you tell us a little bit about your journey on how you kind of came to interval theory? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So... Let's see. So I, I would say that I have been uh, aware of my consciousness and kind of the, the evolution of my consciousness from a very young age. I, I remember waiting for the school bus going into second grade and I was like, I was like, yeah, like this year I know what's up. Like last year when I was in first grade, I didn't know anything. But like now that I'm going into second grade, like I totally know what's going on. And then I noticed that I had that experience again, going into third grade and then going into fourth grade. And at some point, and I don't, you know, like at, at an early age, it was like, wait a second, I'm noticing a pattern here. Like maybe I don't totally know what's up right now. Maybe my, my consciousness is in a process of evolving, which kind of, blew my mind in and of itself but um but and 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 I guess just just knowing that and like knowing so as I was kind of developing my worldview I was aware that that is what I was doing I was like developing a way of thinking about the world and I I gave it a name I mean this came much later I don't know when like late high school early college I used to call myself a a promiscuous pragmatic pluralist uh, and it was only later that I discovered that there was actually an entire kind of like philosophy and body of work around that way of thinking, which was called integral thinking. <laughs> and so I, I very much kind of came to integral, I would say, through the, through the back door. Um, and then when I actually read, you know, the first thing I read was a theory of everything. Ken Wilber's A Theory of Everything. I had two reactions. One was like, dang, Ken Wilber, you articulated this like way better, way more articulately with like way more meticulously researched than I ever could have imagined. And you gave it a much more sayable name than promiscuous pragmatic pluralism. Um, and, you know, the other reaction was just like, wow, I mean, how grateful I am to you for this work you have done and that I'm kind of like riding this wave of collective consciousness with you and everyone else aboard the integral train. And so, um, yeah, I've, that book has kind of remained, uh, I've gone back and reread it many times and it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving, I would say, but it's really, it's actually really only more recently that I've started kind of branching out into what we might call post-integral or or integral left or metamodern or, you know, basically kind of like catching up with the field. Um, and I, I, I have homework to do. Like I actually would love to get more into Gebser and like read some of these original texts, Gebser, Hanzi, et cetera. But um, as far as how that actually connects to m me today or my work today, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm an artist and a public thinker. I, the organizing principle that I use to kind of cohere my work is that of a mirror. So I make things, mostly media and experiences that, that, that hold up a mirror that enable us to see ourselves more clearly with the theory of change being that you know, by seeing ourselves more clearly, we can more creatively and playfully and, and deliberately, you know, learn and grow and evolve and uh, on individually and collectively. And I can, um, I can kind of bring that down to earth with two projects, if that's helpful, or like specific work, if that's helpful. Yeah, so, I mean, there are various things in the works, but the two that are most publicly available right now are Reckonings, which is a podcast that explores how we change in all kinds of ways. So every episode tells the story of someone who made some kind of transformative change from, 
you know, a deeply conservative congressman who made a dramatic shift, actually what he would call a spiritual conversion on climate change to a, a white supremacist who managed to transcend a life of hate to uh, the architect of Facebook's business model who you know, built Facebook's business model and then realized he was addicted to his phone and <laughs> had a reckoning and has since devoted his life to tackling technology addiction. So it's been a, you know, a, a diverse cast of characters, but the through line is really just an exploration of this question, you know, how do people change? And how do people change in ways that connect to or scale into broader social and political change? And I would say even more specifically, it's actually, and it's, it's, it's really a look at how people ch change or evolve from, in a way, first tier consciousness to second tier consciousness, from certainty to uncertainty, from, you know, dogma to ideological liberty. And, and we can kind of go into that further. But the, the second project that I would mention that's you mentioned in the intro is the Infinite Lunchbox, which is a, a YouTube channel and a podcast that ha the, the public facing language is uh, a fresh take on what's going on. But what I'm really doing, which I haven't been super explicit about to my audience, but I, I want to is, is really just looking at current events and, and like this moment from an integral left perspective from a from a perspective that integrates integral theory with progressive politics. And thus far it's been video essays, but I, I, I'm i gonna start playing with, you know, interviews and other formats. And so definitely, you know, philosophically and politically aligned with what y'all are doing with Growing Down, but, you know, like a little more choreographed, I would say. Cool. And before moving too far ahead, I did want to ask you about the promiscuous pragmatic world <laughs> and just how right. you arrived at that combination. I needed three Ps. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it was, um, well, there was the pluralistic aspect of it, of just like all of the above, um, to the point of like promiscuity. Like I, I used to say, I would say like, I'm so open-minded. I'm even open to being closed-minded sometimes like really willing to actually entertain. Um, and um, the pragmatic was just like in service of what, you know, like ultimately what is the goal? It's not pluralism or pr promiscuity for pluralism and promiscuity's sake, right? There's, there's like an, an agenda here or an orientation here and mine would be towards justice or towards, you know, what, broadly speaking, abstractly speaking, the good, the true and the, and the, the good, the true, and the beautiful. Yep. Yeah. So. Awesome. But it was, it's really a mouthful, so. Hey, it rolls off the tongue, I like it. <laughs> it is still, I think it's still actually the political affiliation that I have on my Facebook profile. I'd have to check on that, but I think that's, I think that is my political affiliation. <laughs> So, uh, Steph, first of all, um, very excited. It's, it's been it's been a long time in the making. I feel like this episode and just scheduling us to come together. Um, but one of the questions I wanted to ask you, maybe related to this, is okay. We, we we've explored sort of your evolution into discovering and learning about integral theory and ways in which you've been applying that. Uh, through your art, through your creation, through reckoning. So maybe we can kind of start with reckonings and then sort of explore how some of those themes do show up in, in some episodes. And then if we want, we can go to Infinite Lunchbox too. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you wanted to just jump in, feel free, um, in terms of examples or, or, or ways in which you feel um, the theory has sort of flowered through through reckonings through the podcast and then reception i'd be really curious to see how people respond to these episodes you know yeah so you're asking kind of what, how does integral show up in uh on reckonings yes exactly mm -hmm. yeah um i i and i haven't been explicit by the way in that that the, that's kind of what i'm that that's my lens um, I guess there's kind of like a few, yeah, it really mostly shows up 
as the kinds of change that I focus on. Um, because the kinds of change I'm interested in, you know, a question I often get is, yeah, like, are, are all the shifts from right to left? And the kinds of change I'm interested in are not just like just 180 degree shifts from, you know, pro-life to pro-choice or climate change denier to climate change activist. Um, I, the kinds of change I'm interested in, yeah, are, are from certainty to uncertainty, from really just from being like fearfully attached to my views and my way of being to feeling free to reflect on my views and be critical of my views and then consciously change my views in order to adapt to the reality around me. So all of the conservatives I've featured on the show, perhaps with the exception of one, like didn't necessarily become less conservative. They just happened to change their views on climate change or gun control or whatever the issue was and are now per pursuing a conservative approach to those issues, but with this like expanded like awareness or, ex or, or like expanded capacity to be able to adapt their thinking in order to, to serve their goal. And, 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 and so, yeah, I, like ultimately what's interesting to me is not just a change in views, but a change in the way we relate to our views you know, like a meta change, we could call it, or what I'd call a reckoning, or what we could talk about in terms of, you know, first tier to second tier, from I'm right, everybody's wrong, to every view has some partial rightness, although some views are more right than others. And I guess I would add two caveats to that. One is, you know, these kinds of changes do tend to move in a liberal direction. You know, the word liberal, literally means open to newness and change. And so that's just kind of the nature of, of <laughs> that we could say that is part of the nature of human evolution. And so it makes sense that then people, like if you look through the episodes, you'll find, you know, if you're looking only through the lens of the left, right political spectrum, you'll find that more of the episodes move from right to left. But that, I think that's, yeah, that's just kind of like, part of, again, the nature of the evolution of human consciousness that's gonna work itself out. And, and it already is, like we're already starting to really feel the limits of understanding ourselves through a two-dimensional right-left political spectrum. So, um, so well, that's, that's one caveat. And the second caveat is that, you know, of course I have limits, I have my own limits in terms of what I'm even able to recognize and as an authentic reckoning you know i've i've interviewed people who've shifted from pro-choice to anti-abortion but or pro-choice to pro-life but i would but i was like unable to, to to recognize the reckoning and whether that's because it wasn't there or because i couldn't see it is up for debate and is also a moving target so i guess that's just all a way of saying like yeah the kinds of change i'm interested in kind of don't aren't correlated with left right but because of like the nature of the kind of change i'm looking for and the nature of my own worldview m you know more of the episodes kind of feature movement in the in the left in a leftward or opening up direction well i find that to be really interesting right right uh, uh, i hadn't heard it framed that way right the the idea of sort of shifting perspectives um, is implicitly liberal right like you to change, you have to kind of be open to difference, right? Um, it's not about rigidification or over-specialization. It's about creativity, innovation, a side view, right? A side real glance, a different way of looking at the world. So, and that's actually a liberal, like I used to assume that that was a universal value, kind of like across the board. It's like, isn't everyone interested in becoming more open-minded? Not necessarily. That's not actually a value that's universal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> um, related to that, maybe. Um, well, this is this is a whole other theme or topic. But I know metamodernism has also been um, an interest for you, uh, especially in um, one of the episodes on reckonings about sort of going through the healing process, right? 
and the idea of fakeness and realness. Like, does it matter if an apology is real or fake? And I want to, I want to know if you want to go into that maybe a little bit and we can explore that as well. We can't. So that, you mean the episode with the Pope? Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I could, yeah. So, well, that connects to, uh, another a separate project that Ryan knows a lot about so that so yeah I I mean the way I could say it is I yeah I have um my you know like my wish list of of, of guests people I would love to have on the show um <laughs> like the Pope uh and uh, I was waiting for the Pope to call me and he never called me and so um I decided why not write his reckoning for him and so I, I'd never done fiction on the show, but I, I wrote a script and I had a voice actor perform it. And I really had no idea what listeners were going to say. And then, to, yeah, to my surprise, people, listeners really appreciated it. And I even heard from survivors of clergy sex abuse who found it really helpful to hear the imaginary Pope say the kinds of things that they would love to hear the real Pope say. And that, that I actually don't even, I don't, I don't actually know how that connects to Meta Modern. I would love to hear what your thoughts are about that. But to me, it's just, on the one hand, it's, it's, yeah, it's how amazing that we can cut, like script something or synthesize something that, that like helps us heal. And um, and, and definitely part of the intention with Reckonings and with that piece in particular, and this is something I discovered along the way, you know, it started as an exploration of how people change, but what it's kind of become too is, is a model, is really like a model for how to, how to respond to accusations of, of wrongdoing, how to grow in public, really, how to like take responsibility for our actions in, in like an authentic and compelling and beautiful way. And part of what I see is my job as an artist is to make that model, like the authentic, genuine taking of responsibility look and sound more beautiful, more powerful, more compelling than the, de you know, deflect and deny playbook that we're so used to in the Trump era. And so, yeah, that, that's, there's, there's working with people on the stories that they have, which had been all of the episodes up until then. And then there's also just like scripting it. You know, if what we need is a new model for how to do this, let's just script it, let's model it, let's put it out there, you know, and, and, and yeah, and make it sound more beautiful and powerful so that, you know, more of us are inspired to do it so that our public figures are inspired to do it in public. And so we, you know, like make more room for them to do it. I don't know yeah. how that connects to Meta Modern, though. I would love to hear. <laughs> well, maybe maybe Ryan could also um, jump in here too. But I understood this is a sort of a Meta Modern creative project, maybe implicitly because, especially with the humanities Meta Modernism, not so much the political, but as it's been used in academia right now. Um, it's all this sort of oscillation between fake and real, right? Between yeah. authentic and and performative. And that sort of, you know, there's a kind of acknowledgement by this, this structure of feeling in our culture. And it seems to be showing up more and more of like, actually it's, it's you gain more insight by oscillating between the two and even kind of showing up in both ways. So yeah. I just found that to be such a great expression of that, right? We have a scripted apology by, by the Pope. So yeah. it's fake, but then the genuine transformation and healing that can come through that performance is real, mm -hmm. right? Totally. So I just found it to be so interesting um, along those lines of, of what metamodernism actually means for cultural expression. That makes um, a lot of sense. And I, f I mean, that just, I feel like that just kind of emphasizes to me the fact that, yeah, I feel like I come to a lot of this through the back door, not like, I'm not an academic. I haven't been like reading all the, you know, the texts. It's just kind of like, intuitively, like in the same way I would say for Natalie Wynn, you know, contra it's like, it, it's like, it just, it just is the way that we think or, you know, or, or whatever. And therefore, like, it's the way that we do our work. It's the, it, it is embodied in the way that we make our, 
our art. And with, and with that point in particular, I love that. I, yeah, it's like, it's, I mean, this connects to the whole post-truth because yeah, it's not just about like, is it true or not? Is it's what is it serving? And may we leverage fiction and nonfiction, just like use whatever we need. I mean, the fact that we can, vir the fact that virtual reality is fake and it can help us overcome PTSD, right? So like, let's use our, in you know, or the placebo effect is like the most underutilized thing in all of medicine. Like, let's use our consciousness in our service, whether we're feeding it, you know, fiction or not fiction. Like, to the extent that we can understand how our consciousness evolves, let's create whatever ingredients we need in order to evolve it in the way that we want it to evolve. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Maybe this is also a good way to switch tracks over to Infinite Lunchbox um, and sure. talk about Natalie Wynn, right? Um, I know Ryan was interested in this too about like strategies with integral and culture. And uh, there's a sort of larger theme that you yourself are expressing by like kind of intuitively coming to these insights um, and innovations and then also kind of going like, hey, you know what? This is showing up in culture. So what happens when we engage people in culture, culture makers? Um, and bring that kind of meta awareness to them. And I, I think there's been some very interesting um, um, reactions to your Natalie Wynn video. And we've gotten like a, I have to thank you as well, because on the <laughs> integral left Facebook forum, we've been getting so many folks who join because you have to, you know, apply to join. You just have to enter like a little questionnaire oh, yeah. to the rules. But people say, oh yeah, found you through Infinite Lunchbox. So I have to thank you for bringing in so many interested folks kind of in this, in this integral space. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just the, the, the Natalie Wynn video. Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and, and what your uh, thought and creative process was behind that video. Uh, that was so, um, what was the thought process behind that video? It's, I guess it's just something that to me has been kind of clear from the beginning of like experiencing her work and loving her work. And for people who don't know her, ContraPoints is, uh, calls herself an ex-philosopher. She's a philosophy PhD dropout turned uh, YouTube personality performance artist. She's a trans woman YouTube personality performance artist. I call her a magician because she is capable of making social justice sexy and beautiful and artful, which I think that's magic right there. But um, yeah, it's just been clear to me from the beginning. I, like to me, it just, yeah, that she was speaking integral and that what she was doing, she does these really brilliant um, dialogues. I, mean, I would call them integral dialogues, basically where she's playing the different memes in the spiral. She's got green, she's got orange, she even has blue. And then the chorus is, is what's integral. But she plays all the parts not as straw men. Like she really steel mans these different characters. So you really get the strongest version of each and see the partial truth of each. But because I'm, I'm pretty sure she doesn't know about integral philosophy is my sense. Like she has a very, like I'm also, I, well, I'm an undergrad philosophy dropout. Um, yeah, we, we, we're, <laughs> I mean, what you learn, and at least what I learned, and I think what she was learning is, not integral philosophy, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's classic, it's classic philosophy, it's Greek philosophy and, you know, like Western, mostly Western philo philosophy. And so um, I think that's kind of her reference point. And I, I just see, yeah, I, th I think she's, I think she's speaking integral. I think she doesn't necessarily have that language. And so therefore, she kind of gets like cornered a little bit into like, um, green or gets kind of like cornered by her detractors in certain ways and I yeah my thought was I mean and um, I don't know maybe this is a little shameless although I try to do it in a humble way you know like to introduce to, to, to demonstrate how she is speaking integral with the intention of both um, I mean ideally helping her kind of maybe see where she is coming from in a way that better helps her like articulate what she's doing and kind of like defend herself against her detractors and maybe like rekindle her love for philosophy even like through a whole kind of new world but also her audience 
um, to do the same for her audience because I think a lot of people in her audience, similarly, it's like when, when they're trying to defend her work or even understand what it is that they love about it. And that's actually exactly what I've heard from um, the responses to the videos. Her, like the, the main response has been like, wow, thank you for helping me understand why I love her work so much. And like how it is that I'm thinking because that actually really resonates with me. And for a lot of people, same thing, back door. It's like, that is how I think. I just didn't have a name for it or I didn't, I didn't know that it was like a whole body of, body of work that I'm now really curious about. So now I'm gonna join the integral left Facebook group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, it's interesting you keep bringing up the back door, and I think one of the most neglected of those transcendental ideals is that beautiful aspect to that, maybe the upper left. And just wondering when you when you when you talk about that seductive role that it plays in sort of the the videos that you produce, how is it? Do you think you're using seduction to bring people into the sense making that you're doing online? Seduction. Um, how am I, um, I don't know if I understand, how am I using seduction? Oh, well, I guess, no, I, th I think, I think if I understand your question correctly, I just want to, by the way, I just want to say before I forget, I kind of want to do the same thing for Crystal Ball. Not that she would ever see it. I mean, if she would, that would be amazing. But, because I think same, same thing with her. And she sometimes gets cornered into more of like a green thing because she doesn't quite like, so anyway, I'm just going to plant that seed for a second. But yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, th it's, I mean, I think it's just as simple as like most people are not as interested in getting nerdy on the philosophy as, as, as we are, you know, or the majority of people. Like they don't, they don't necessarily want to like read a book about integral theory. They just want to like use it or see it being used or resonate with it or Right? I mean, ultimately use it <laughs> in order to understand the world and navigate their lives. And so I, I, if, I, if I understood your question correctly, I mean, I, I think there's just a lot of value in, 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 in doing, in, in, in like embodying integral in a creative and artful and playful and fun way that isn't, isn't as didactic, I guess. Like I, it's, and it's interesting even not, I'm actually kind of like realizing this as I'm saying it, I actually gravitate towards the didactic stuff. Didact, I, like I actually do love, but maybe, maybe that's kind of my, my way. It's like, I want to, I want to read the didactic stuff and really learn. And I do have more homework to do, but then I want to like translate it into a form that is that, that, you know, as you would call it is more seductive or has more kind of like broader mainstream appeal. Yeah, so you, you identify as an artist. So do you, and just sort of asking you this, do you find the value in more of the kind of producing pieces and you get that sort of, I don't want to call it a high or whatever, but that's the value. Um, and obviously you're con combining that with the didactic piece of it. But do you, I mean, are these, um, is your ultimate goal the creation and the act of producing and that's where you find sort of your joy and your bliss? <sighs> You know, I've, I haven't asked myself that question in that way. I, if I look at all of the things that I want to do, if I just like put all like my dream projects in the big pile, yeah, probably more of them are doing exactly that or kind of like translating, like, um, for example, um, this is a totally absurd idea that I don't know if I could, but like one thing I would love to do, and it really comes from this way of thinking, but it's not, it's not like, it's not making it explicit. Like I would love, I think Van Jones is the person who could get this done. So if he could get, um, he's on CNN, right? Okay. So if he could, if he could work out a deal where CNN and Fox traded one hour of programming for one hour, CNN gets to show Fox's audience whatever they want to show them. <laughs> and for that same hour, you know, Fox gets to show CNN's audience whatever they want to show them. And then maybe for the subsequent hour, they show whatever they showed. And then they're like, 
you know, but I mean that, and there's more I can say about like why that's interesting to me, but it's really kind of about, I guess, like taking these ways of thinking and understanding integral, post-integral metamar, and um, yeah, just like, uh, express, like using them to make, using them to, using them to kind of heal our fractured, you know, media landscape slash even like consciousness landscape. Yeah, it's so it's like less, I mean, to your point, yeah, I mean, thank you. In a way, you're kind of like helping me understand what I'm trying to do here. It is, it is very much like drawing from this way of thinking and then using it as a, yeah, as like the fuel that I create with and express with and do the kind of like service work that I am here to do. Yeah, and, and oh yeah, Ryan, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, I mean, I like the idea about CNN and Fox News. I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit more about your vision of what a kind of integral left uh, progressive community or culture would look like. And what we're trying to do here on the show, for example, is by consciously and explicitly marrying integral theory with progressivism, we kind of stand out as a niche community or, or at least the audience that we're going for. Um, I don't think there's been a lot of work done in this area. I mean, I think the more, cons the more mainstream integral voices when I talk about politics tend to be more centrist from our perspective. And so we're very conscious about saying, look, this is our politics, this is our perspective, this is our biases, and uh, here it is, right, mixed with integral. So like, what is, what is your kind of vision and of how this integral left culture, um, and what do you think integral can really bring to the table and what, what do you really wanna see? Maybe you can give some more ideas about how a culture can kind of form around these ideas. Huh. I mean, I think, I mean, I think I'm kind of at the beginning of this, like for me, it had been kind of separate, my integral thinking and my progressive politics. Um, and um, so part of it is just like, wait a second, observing that and inquiring into that. And why is that separate? And I guess, I mean, really, um, well, I mean, I guess I'll answer the question too, is one, what, what can integral bring? Well, it can help us move into second tier consciousness for one, you know, it can help us go from, you know, from all of this, you know, I'm right, everyone's wrong, whether you're orange or green or whatever, to actually coming from a place of, which I think Natalie Wynn does, which I think Crystal Ball does, both of whom are, I think, just like such helpful voices right now. It, you know, move us to a place of everyone has some partial truth, although some, you know, some truths are more comprehensive than others. I mean, I, I think there's a reason why Natalie's work or ContraPoints is on fire. I think there's a reason why Crystal Ball is on fire. People are hungry for this. They don't necessarily know even what they're hungry for, but then they see it and they recognize it because it's honest and it's fresh and it doesn't have all these sacred cows and it actually questions everything and it acknowledges the rightness wherever it lives. So that's, that's kind of like one, one piece of it. But I mean, I think the other piece really is like, I, I mean, I, I posted about this in the discord, this question of like, does inequality matter within the context? Is there such a thing as like inequality of consciousness? Like, does it matter that there's such a spread? Like there's so much inequality within the spiral, let's say. Um, and I actually, I actually think it does matter. I think, I, I do believe that human consciousness cannot get too far up the spiral if too many people are too far down this far. And I'm like cringing as I say this, but I feel like you guys can understand where I'm coming from. Like in, you know, they're in collective liberation terms, like, yeah, perhaps it is true that none of us are fully evolving unless all of us are fully evolving, which has major implications for people who care about the evolution of human consciousness versus just the evolution of their own consciousness, right? It just, it just like justice therefore matters if you care about the evolution of human consciousness, which I think is, is big. I mean, I think that therefore demands that people who care about consciousness pay attention to justice and pay attention to politics and pay attention to it in a progressive way. So yeah, that's 
yeah does that does that leave out though i mean for me again kind of maybe not going exactly with what ryan's is saying is I, I still think there's a value to perhaps not leaving the conservatives behind using that own analogy if there is that spectrum of consciousness and if we are concerned about each person getting to that next level how do you you know what role do people that identify perhaps at a higher level play in sort of bringing people scaffolding to the next sort of level and so i guess kind of riffing off of that i'm, I'm curious in your perspective if you had your dream and your wishes and you were able to get cnn and fox to agree to that what would cnn play and what would fox play so that's what's interesting here that's that's like i mean at least cnn has van jones um I think, I mean, I, 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 I have like my, I, I don't, I don't know. I haven't like come up with like what I would want, you know, <laughs> CNN to play, assuming I'd be like doing more, I'd be doing the consulting for them or something. It's really more like, uh, let, let, let's all see what they decide to play to each other and let that be what we're seeing. And, and let's all see the same thing for a second and see what happens. You know, like we haven't really been doing a lot of that. Like I, well, what's wild is we do see the same things, but yet we see them in such wildly different ways. Um, I guess say, like things that are going on in the world, but um, yeah, it's more, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. So I'm not really answering your question of like, what, what would I want them to show each other? It's more like, let us see what they decide to show each other as in and of itself you know, a lesson and like, I don't know, like for the sake of just like having a moment of all watching the exact same thing, let's just do that almost as like a, like a, I don't know, like an experience we haven't had in a long time. <laughs> this, <laughs> this old ritual of all just watching the same thing together. Yeah. Yeah, I know, just sort of listening um, so far to what you're saying and stuff in my experience usually talking to people that identify kind of with any perspective there's inherent biases that maybe you're aware of that perhaps the other person isn't aware of and while you can't directly just call that out i think playing into that seductive role you have to kind of do it in a way in which you know you're trying to illuminate perhaps some of those biases and see if they can themselves see it and then the other question can come into well, well if they can't see it what what sort of underlying beliefs perhaps makes a person sort of stick to a way that prevents them from seeing a bigger picture and that was just my take uh on sort of what you were saying with the cnn fox thing yeah i mean you're kind of bringing back the mirror mm -hmm. a little bit yeah it's just like holding up a mirror yeah cool yeah yeah i just want to mention my latest kind of crusade or, or mission that I've become really passionate about in the last few months, especially with the whole George Floyd incident and all of the racial turmoil that's taken place in the last few weeks. Um, you know, in my experience with like integral community, game B, not, metamodernism I won't speak to because I'm actually not very involved with the metamodern community, so I don't really know what's going on there, but there just seems to be a dearth of sense-making around race and identity issues. And it's been, it's become a bit of a pet peeve of mine and Brent Cooper's as well, because I feel like in that void, it, a lot of very unconscious or reactive sense making is taking place, right? It's being filled with a lot of, it, it's like, how do I say it? Some people are able to sense make at a really high and nuanced, sophisticated level. And then when it comes to issues that are inflammatory and controversial, racial issues, identity issues, identity politics, it's just like the whole conversation level just drops completely and it becomes just first year culture wars all over again, indistinguishable from some Twitter war in these yeah. conscious sense making communities. And one of the things I appreciate about you was how you kind of, the ContraPoints video and then with other videos, but like the, you know, the, the projects you're working on now uh, with the Me Too, you know, with um, the, we've been talking about with Biden and Kavanaugh and so forth. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of going right to a lot of these very controversial cultural issues mm -hmm. and trying to provide an integral perspective on them, which I think is absolutely crucial. So can you just talk a little bit about what you're trying to do there and maybe the importance of consciously 
using integral philosophy to inform how we think about these very controversial cultural issues regarding race and identity and gender yeah. and so forth. It's funny, people kind of have told me like, oh, you know, me too, my husband, you know. Um, and I guess just to give a little, like put a little context on this, the project that you're referring to. So I'm, so the, the, the episode with the Pope was actually an audio prototype of a video project that I'm working on. So I imagine folks are familiar with deep fakes, fake video where you can make it look like people are saying or doing things they never said or did. And a lot of it is, you know, it's like funny, like sticking Nicolas Cage's face on, in a movie that he didn't act in, but a lot of it is, 96% of it is actually involuntary pornography, sticking someone's face in a porn movie they were never in. And then, you know, if we're already where we're at with political misinformation, we can just all imagine the darker turns that things can take once you get video in there. And, you know, and uh, per the creating a new model, I'm, so I, I'm, I'm basically using deep fakes to take reckonings in a fictional direction. So if Brett Kavanaugh had a reckoning with the way he responded to the sexual allegations against him, what would he say? And what would that look like? And it will be absolutely explicit that it's fake. And, you know, this is not parody. I don't know if I would call it the opposite of parody, but I'm not trying to make him look like a fool. I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to imagine him with extraordinary moral courage and have him speak from that place. So, you know, with the question being, you know, how can we use our synthetic selves to elicit or envision our better angels? And yeah, people have warned me with Brett Kavanaugh in particular. It's like, you're just walking into a minefield, you know, like why, like why walk into me too? And I guess, I don't know. I just feel like with um, armed with, inner, you know, with integral thinking, it, things just, because you can actually hold all the partial truths with it. And then it's like not so scary because you are speaking to the partial truths that everyone is, is holding, you know, to the, to the conservative, to, like per Matt's point. And, and so, yeah, I, I mean, and this is, this is similar to Natalie Wynn, similar to Crystal Ball. And it's funny, they both have been canceled, you know, by the like woke, super woke. Um, and I, I mean, I'm going to get it from all sides, right? From Brett Kavanaugh, it's going to be like, like, it's going to be all the way from like, he doesn't deserve to have a, his apology written for him all the way to like, he didn't do anything wrong. And therefore, you know, and, um, you know, my creative challenge to myself is to produce something that would neither alienate the person that it's about, no, and like speak to that person's critics, which may be a non-existent overlap in the Venn diagram, but I am like committed, you know, and like integral is what is helpful. To, to like carving out that tiny little overlap that's there, you know, or like finding it or making it or expanding it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just feel more capable of getting into these really like hot cultural issues because, you know, because of this way that this way of thinking allows me to, to see these partial truths and therefore speak to them, you know, and there's this anecdote, I'll just mention this I don't know, I don't remember where this came from. You, you guys have, have maybe heard of this, of like, you know, the, the integral person goes to a party. Have, have you heard this? this, so, the, this so, so this, you know, this like yellow meme goes to a party and they're having a conversation with like blue and orange and green and blue and orange and green are so like annoyed at each other. You know, um, it's like blue is just like wanting to follow all the rules at the party and, you know, and then like orange is like, you know, being competitive at the keg stand and then green is like, you know, like, you know, being triggered and whatever, wanting to create a safe space. And then, and then yellow, like they don't totally understand yellow, but they dislike yellow the least. And it's like, that's kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, that, that might sound like an unambitious goal, but to be like disliked the least, but there's, I mean, I think there's something there. And I think if you look at like who is critical of, um, or like the ideological diversity of the audiences and detractors of ContraPoints, of Crystal Ball, like you'll see that like, they're kind of like, 
dislike the lead there's I don't know there yeah so I don't know all that to say I, I feel more comfortable going into the going into these hot issues because of because this way of thinking kind of creates um yeah and, and like new opportunities for seeing things that are like integrate integration really yeah so maybe we could go into uh this this question of um it's one of the topics we talked about possibly exploring, and I feel like we kind of have already, but it, it's sort of circling back to it, this connection between personal transformation and collective transformation or collective cultural evolution, right? These, this idea that changing of one's perspective of um, creating moments of empathy or transformation, right? The, a theory of change of the individual and how that's related to cultural change. Um, I think just, just to preface that too, what you're doing in these projects is really kind of hitting that middle space because it's a cultural project you're doing. You're, you're um, participating in a cultural conversation, right? Brett Kavanaugh or the Pope, et cetera, contrapoints. Um, these individuals are already kind of this attractor point of all of these different positions and polarities and they're all kind of debating with one another it's already kind of part of this cultural conversation and i think it's interesting as a kind of an art practice as a kind of a theory practice you're kind of jumping into the middle of that mm -hmm. and doing exactly what you're talking about so i i don't know if you want to unpack this a little bit um where i'm going yeah. with this but... yeah and you're right i mean that is exactly what i'm playing with with reckonings is the relationship between personal and social change you know the idea that like big change out there in the world you know also manifests in here inside of us you know and that therefore we 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 can i mean we must we must be the change <laughs> um, but how does that actually happen and i mean yeah th i mean that happens and this is perhaps painfully obvious <laughs> to you, but that happens by actually integrating the practice of personal and social change. You know, from the social change side of things, you know, if you're involved in activism or community organizing or, you know, ask yourself, like, how is that actually changing you? You know, I loved how um, David Hartful talked about activism as a venue for doing shadow work. I think that's brilliant, you know, and then from, from like, similarly from the personal change side of things, you know, if you're involved in some kind of practice of personal growth or, you know, meditation or what, whatever it is, like ask yourself similarly, like how is the rubber meeting the road? How is that actually changing the, how is that having some kind of, you know, social impact, whether it's in your family or neighborhood or, you know, your broader community, the, the world. And, and in terms of, I guess, I mean, I, yeah, I also think about this in terms of kind of like social change strategy, like engaging the personal with the social. So, you know, for example, um, um, you know, a, a, as we move, the, like we know that we need to move beyond fossil fuels. And we also know that fossil fuel based industries like auto and coal represent not just jobs for people, but like, but, but, but identity, you know, and meaning. And, and so where, where is the personal aspect of, of, you know, of like climate change activism? Like what if we, what if, what if the same way that we like eulogize people when they, when they, when they pass, what if we somehow kind of like ritualized auto factory and coal mine closures, you know, to, to like help people come to terms with, with the, with 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 the shift away from fossil fuels, I mean that's like engaging the personal in like a social change uh, strategy, I guess you could say. Or I, and I'm actually going to even go further and probably ruffle some feathers here. But what if we did that with with uh, with Confederate monuments? I mean that sounds insane. And yes, they were built to endorse the horrors of Jim Crow and white supremacy, but um, they. I mean, they've also come to represent so much more than that for a lot of people. And so what if the destruction of these monuments were, were like ceremonialized in some way that like eased the process of their 
destruction. And as, you know, as horrific as these things are socially, a proper goodbye that like takes the personal change, <laughs> you know, into account might actually might actually like help help us, you know, say goodbye to them. And I mean, I think this is ultimately just like a four quadrant, you know, kind of like vision of of, of change, or, or at least a vision that um, integrates the upper left, right, self and consciousness with the with the lower right, you know, social system and environment. And it's it's like almost funny to me how we kind of like go in circles a lot. Like like I find myself in these conversations, or you know, where it's like, oh, but wait, um, like, do we start with the personal, or do we start with the, you know, and we're, and just kind of go in circles. Um, like, how do we do this thing versus how do we like convince people to do it? Or I don't know if this is making. I don't know. I hear I like hear this oscillation. I I don't think there's like one place to start necessarily. I don't think you like always have to start with the personal or always have to start, like always have to start with the upper left or always have to start with the lower right. I mean maybe 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 there is a theory you could develop like for certain issues starting with the upper left makes more sense. I I don't know, but ultimately, I mean it's just a coevolution and 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 it just it's <laughs> between the personal and the social and so you know it, it it's it's yeah to me it's just a matter of, of engaging both i guess you know and we can even use the term ken wilber has the term uh, integral transformative practice i mean we can think of it as an integral transformative practice where transformative is referring to personal and social transformation like what is the integral transformative practice for or around this issue, what, whatever the issue is? Well, I think you kind of answered our earlier question about what does an integral left look like from your perspective? Yeah. <laughs> I know you said you're still like learning, but uh, in sort of um, taking this all in, but to me, like that's, that's a wonderful answer, as good as, as we've tried to throw out there. Um, but I, I would say for sure that. Um, you know, Wilbur even says like a transformation, like why people develop, framing it in his words, is, is a mystery. We don't know how someone moves from this stage to this stage. Ultimately, there's a strange kind of liminality between, between those different phases, like why people grow, why people change. And so I find it very interesting that it really kind of requires us to, to develop some kind of creative um, a, a praxis or practice um, where it's not merely systematic, right? Like you really kind of have to create a field and even almost a performance. And even you have like in your, in reckonings, there's even perhaps some fakery involved, right? In, in virtualizing and synthesizing and something can happen there, you know, not always, but something can happen there. So I um, really appreciate that. And the other element I was just going to bring in was um, you're talking about making this a more meaningful closure closure or transition right like getting rid of these statues is one example it really kind of helps us frame that so many of these events right now like the toppling of statues um or not or framing against them as like oh these guys are anarchists and vandals and they want to topple society these are all kind of meaning making battles right like oh. we weaponize meaning making all the time we're just not literate about it so what happens when we come in with a different kind of intentionality, like the kind that you're um, uh, attempting to do, I think very successfully through your podcast and through uh, your YouTube channel, it's like there's a different intentionality going into that process. But I think the process of literacy around meaning making is both individual and collective, just naturally, right? Like Bateson has that, Nora Bateson has that line um, that just, I kept uh, hearing it as you were, as you were discussing. Uh, we have to solve our problems by solving everything at once. Like you can't do it piecemeal. You can't just the individual or the collective or this area of society or that it has to be somehow everything at once. And mm -hmm. that how we do that, you know, that's what we're still trying to figure out. But I think certainly taking the whole attitude in mind and going into it in that way is is where we start at least. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. I like that. I hadn't heard that Nora Bateson quote. Thank you. I guess one of the things that's popping up in my head here, I was watching, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it yet, the uh, 13 documentary on Netflix. Have you guys seen that? I started watching it last night and 
and I was kind of reflecting back on what you said earlier, Stephanie, about moving in a liberal direction. And they were talking about how in the 90s, Clinton sort of went and sort of took on the sort of more of a conservative policies of more jails, more prisons, et cetera. And sort of just prior to the 2016 Clinton run actually went in front of the NAACP and apologized for that direction, admitted it was wrong. But some of this sort of when I hear about theory of change, and, and I think it's more easier on a personal level, but collective, you start to move into these camps that maybe aren't so willing to give up what I see as power, right? So maybe why these monuments still exist and the base names with the Confederate general still exist it is a sense of power in the whole identity of perhaps the collective here, the United States. And so how... And you talked a little, and I might be combining too many things, so if it doesn't make sense, just let me know. You talked earlier, I forgot what example you, you, you brought up, I think it was the climate change conservative that talked about like a spiritual conversion. Mm -hmm. um, and so for you, do you see sort of these, when, when you see a movement or a reckoning, do, do you see that as a spiritual thing? Um, it certainly can be. Um, spirituality has been part of it for a lot of people, um, yeah. Um, do you, I guess my, my question that you brought up the integral transformative practice, do you, do you have a connection to an upper left spiritual practice that you kind of um, bring into your, to your own artwork? Yeah, it's, so I, I was raised Jewish and not surprisingly to anyone who is familiar with Judaism at this point, my favorite holiday is Yom Kippur, which is basically a day of reckoning. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's one day a year where, and many spiritual traditions have this baked in, this process of critical self-reflection is basically what it is. And it's, you spend a day, you fast, and you reflect on how you affect other people and how you want to be affecting other people. And there is a practice of, of, of apologizing as part of it, like reaching out to people and apologizing. And like, I need that at least once a year. <laughs> I mean, if I was doing it every day, it would probably drive me insane, but certainly once a year. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't, it, it's certainly, yeah, it's, it's, it's baked into like the process of reckoning, let's say it's baked into many spiritual traditions. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that, that is kind of like what I'm, I guess, like pro here, you know, it's not like pro uh, a, a specific change, um, you know, from this to that, although, you know, I, I obviously have my own, you know, opinions or political opinions, but I, I have a lot of faith now um, in, in, in just quite simply the process of critical self-reflection, like authentically engaging in that process on a regular basis as, as, yeah, as like an, as, as an, sure, as part of an integral transformative practice. Awesome. And I know, um, before I forget you, um, you talked a little bit about, and I forgot what the context of the project was, but you mentioned crystal ball. <sighs> and so do you, do you, and you said she's getting canceled by the, the woke culture right now? Is that, is that your, and why do you think that is? Multiple times. And you know, what's funny, actually, I, you, you know, how I just, I actually discovered Crystal Ball. The way I discovered her um, is because she interviewed, she, she interviewed Natalie Wynn and um, this was a little while ago. And I, I was just on this rabbit hole of like wanting to see all of Natalie Wynn's interviews. And um they have this really beautiful moment where Crystal Ball, and I actually didn't know who Crystal Ball was. So I had the perfect experience of her of being like, wow, this looks like real TV and she's so dressed up and has the set and yet look at what's coming out of her mouth. Like I had exactly the experience she's going for. <laughs> um, and, and, and what she said to Natalie Wynn was, um, she, they were talking about how Natalie Wynn had been like majorly canceled back in December. and. And at the end of the interview, Crystal Ball just has this really sweet, like vulnerable moment of, of appreciation for Natalie and like, like really like thanks her and for putting herself out there. And in these, it's just this like rare display of emotional self-awareness and vulnerability from this 
from this woman that to me looked like this like very traditional <laughs> like television news pundit, you know, so uh, um, I was really moved by it. And then I was like, well, who is this person? And started learning more about her. And I, the, the reason I brought her up though is because um, someone had asked you, oh, I think Jeremy, I think Layman asked you like who you would love to interview. And I was like, say Crystal Ball, say Crystal. I think she's the first person you said. And I would love, yeah, I, 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 Maybe, maybe that's what I'll, um, <laughs> if I could get her to watch the video, I will make a video to try to get her on the growing down. But I mean, the reason that the reason I brought her up, yeah, is because I think, I think she too is speaking integral in a way that she, she and I, I, I hate to sound like, I don't want to sound arrogant, but like, I, I don't think she knows necessarily that, that that's what she's doing. And I think that knowing that would be helpful to her. So it, it basically, I was just saying like, I would like to make a video similar to the one I made for ContraPoints, but made it, make it for Crystal Ball and with excerpts from her show and show her like what she's doing. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, there is the question of like, why is it helpful? Like, does she even need to know she's doing that if she's doing it? I, I mean, I can only speak from my own personal experience as someone who also came through the back door, but like after coming through the back door and then like being able to walk through the front door, all of the above. Great. I'm really glad I kind of like came to it intuitively. And then I'm also really glad that there's like an entire body of work that I can now learn from and draw from that has absolutely enriched, you know, the way that I think. So. For sure. Yeah. No, that's great that we both were on the same page about, about <laughs> her and uh, just, just what the hill is doing in general. You know, I even think, you know, some leftists have really went against like Segar and Jetty online too. So he's been kind of canceled as well. Or like Crystal Ball has been canceled for just being on a show with a conservative. Okay. Just, just being there with him, just showing up together and doing the show together is enough. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult landscape socially to navigate. And um, the reason why I brought up Crystal Ball, maybe it's a similar reason, is exactly the same reaction you had when I first saw the show, when I first saw The Hill, I was like, what is, okay, this is like some kind of like, you know, mainstream news channel. But then they're talking about revolution and Bernie and economic populism. I was just blown away. It was just a YouTube algorithm to just recommended it next after one of my more leftist shows. Maybe it was Michael Brooks or The Young Turks or something. And I was like, who are these people? Whatever they're doing, this is beautiful. They're yeah. presenting themselves in a way that says, centrism, mainstream media, right? CNN, MSNBC. Legitimacy. Yeah. Legitimacy, right. And yet they're, they're just, they're, they're doing some jujitsu with that. And I just love that, again, that middle space, that interesting space where they understand the cultural language, and yet they take a much more left-leaning position, even, even Sagar, you know, just yeah. in terms of economic populism. Um, so yeah, I, I would love to, like you, I think it would be fantastic to interview them about that part of the process, because I think it may be, um, you feel this way too, you know, to bring that part of the process forward, to bring individuals like that forward, I think kind of empowers folks like us, like you and me, and like what we're doing here at Growing Down is to really sort of how to be in that middle space, how to create those interesting jujitsu moves where we sort of understand the literacy of so-called other or the mainstream and we can work with that and fold that for transformative means or at least attempts i think it's just so good to see that going on in culture so yeah. yeah totally yeah i think you guys should be like um or whatever we all should be like rotating guests on rising <laughs> or or into yeah yeah i yeah because there's, there's like a similar, I mean, you're actually doing something very similar in a way. You don't, you don't have like the person who's the integral left and the person who's the integral right, let's say, but like you have, a, you, you have that, um, I mean, that, 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 that's the orientation here, basically, is like the talking about what's going on in, in your integration episodes, at least, is like talking about what's going on in the world from an integral left perspective, which, yeah. So Stephanie, something I'm really curious about, I think as a group, we've kind of discussed it, is sort of the, uh, the maybe the lack of female presence in the integral community. And I was just wondering if you had a take on that, that's hot. Hey, I was going to ask you guys about that. Um, am I the first woman that you've had 
You're the second. We had Eileen Ravy for the national popular vote on last week that ha we, hasn't come out yet. It's uh, not intentional, of course, but just wondering what your thoughts on sort of, you know, you obviously come through this journey and arrive through the back door. Um, just wondering if you think Integral turns off or is there something about Integral in general that maybe doesn't attract sort of a more feminine, feminine perspective? Um, sort of when you were talking about Crystal Ball and sort of her sympathy with Natalie, or at least her conversation, it sort of a couple words that I, you know, that you said stand out to me as I see as more feminine principles as far as um, vulnerability and embodiment. And, and that's just my riff on it, but I was just seeing if you had a take on it. Yeah, um, uh, this is one of those, one of the minefields, but I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess, I, I do want to kind of like caveat this a little bit with um, there's there's a difference between you know men 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 bodied people and women bodied people and and obviously you know m masculine and feminine energies and men bodied people can embody feminine energy and women bodied people but you know our our world is pretty is like kind of up against I mean up against both but certainly kind of like um there is <laughs> we could say that women body people have like a disproportionate amount of the feminine energy i don't know but or like at least the world is very much kind of responding to and sexist against women bodied people so that's we don't want to like lose that focus i guess a lot of the kind of more new i don't know like sometimes it moves into this more kind of like energetic realm and it's like no our bodies are still really important too so <laughs> all of the above but that said um yeah it's funny i've heard um you know this has come up on a lot of the like it's 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 it's, it's apparent to me and to a lot of people that a lot of the voices that we hear in the integral meta modern game b space are the voices of white men and you know on these you know whether it's rebel wisdom or future thinkers or, you know, even though that's co-hosted by a man and a woman and yeah. And so the question comes up, you know, and I've heard, I've heard, I've heard the quite like, even like the hosts kind of like ask like, Oh, you know, well, or, or, or say something. Um, I'm going to kind of make it sound worse than it is, but it's like, we're not trying to only have, you know, we want to have women, like we're, we're not sexist, you know, but it's like, it's, but it's not really just about you. Like you're operating within, <laughs> lower right, right? You're operating within a broader social context that institutionalized sexism and misogyny is a part of, which means you're, 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 you're probably going to have to do a little extra work on this. Like, it's not just about not being sexist yourself. There's going to, so I guess the way, like, I don't know if I were to have like a take, um, I, the question that I ask, um, and this might be a good one for us all to talk about is just like, what, what does gender equality look like? Like, wh how do we think about gender equality in a, in an integral left way? I, I feel like I want to put quotes around. How do we think about gender equality <laughs> in an integral left way? I mean, and I, I'd say we're not, we're not um, trying to achieve some kind of like contrived flat balance between men and women, although that might actually be a necessary interim step to kind of deal with the institutionalized sexism that we're up against. Like we might actually have to create something that feels really flat and like affirmative action -y or something that people don't, don't like feel is um, right. Um, but, 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 but on the way to like, where are we ultimately trying to go on the way to something that is more like a rightful expression of women's and men's voices or a rightful expression of feminine and masculine energy where it's no longer just like flat, like you get one turn and then you get one turn, but it's dynamic, it's adaptive. It's like under which circumstances does whose voice need to be heard? Um, uh, if, if, I mean, I guess it, it is, I mean, it's starting, it, it is starting to sound like just like an integral perspective on gender equality, but that's, I guess my, um, yeah, I mean, if we're going back to just like, is there a problem here and what should we do about it, like growing down wise or rebel wisdom wise or anything wise, um, I think you, I think if it's something you care about, 
well, first, yeah, like talk about it, like be explicit about the fact that you're thinking about it and caring about it. And then, yeah, there's just a little then extra work that you need to do, you know, regardless of, you know, irrespective of like you being sexist or not sexist, it's like just do the extra work that it's going to take to get us to wh whatever your vision is, your integral vision of gender equality is. We have about 15 minutes left and this is exactly the conversation I wanted to have today. So uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting excited. So I, I think about the general subject of gender or race, out there race in there too, because um, you know, naturally that's something I'm more interested in. But it, it, from an integral perspective, there are kind of two values of including different identity groups, right? So the way that I think about it, one is the, the lived experience of certain groups, you know, women, uh, people of color, even you can throw in class there in, in there as well, that are socially influenced by the various sociological, cultural, societal relations and structures and systems that we're embedded in, provide unique insight in, and uh, perspectives onto certain topics such as really any kind of social issue that other identity groups will not be able to really understand or transmit very well. Right. Mm -hmm. So like when we were talking to David Hartful, I mean, his kind of embodiment of the black liberation movement and the way that he transmitted that to me through the screen, just I think really by the virtue of not only being an expert in the field, but also as a black man in America who's li have has lived a life and has had the experience of being black in America. Like, like, you, like I can read all the books I want to, but having him talk is just like wow like it's such a different world it's such a different perspective and such a needed perspective so that's kind of like the internal value of that the external value i think is also of course a classical argument in a lot of green circles about having diverse representation is um empowering for people of those same groups who feel like their group is being excluded from the conversation mm -hmm. and so i do wonder if the lack of diversity of both gender and race and so forth in integral and game B kind of spaces is kind of a vicious circle where more more minorities or or women or whatever are like screw this is just monopolized by a bunch of white men. Uh, I don't feel like my perspective is really being voiced. And like for, for example, when if I can go after like <laughs> Ken or or other people on in, in the mainstream integral um, spaces, they'll, they'll say a lot of things where I'm like you know as a minority, I just completely disagree with that. Like. I've had a completely different life experience and therefore have a different perspective. Doesn't mean mine's better. I'm still biased as a minority, but I, I, it's a different perspective that should be on the table that's not being included here. And I just, I'm just like, screw this. I'm not gonna listen to this anymore, right? I'll start the Growing Down podcast and give my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way I think about it. Um, and how, how to go about doing that. I mean, I, I do think that there really are a lot of, oh, my computer froze. We can still hear you. We hear you. Yeah. Oh, I think he's frozen now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, any riff? Any riff on that? Oh, he's back. Ryan, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's been happening the whole time. But no. Um, yeah, I, I could, uh, I could be done there. Like, like, I guess what I was just saying was how to go about doing that. I do think that there are people out there who are giving these different perspectives. You just have to, as you were saying, we have to just go on and find them. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm happy to, I mean, I've actually been planning to do a, a Infinite Lunchbox episode on this specific topic, and I have some women I've been talking to, and I'm, I'm happy to, like, I, I, you know, give you, give you some recommendations, but um, I think part of this, too, is, like, you doing the work, you know, and I, I feel like I can just say that to you, and you won't get defensive, and it's not weird. It's just like, yep, we care about that. We're in a real left over here, so let's do that work, because this is part of, I mean, this is like making the message, the medium or the, you know, it's like being it the way that we embodying it in the way that we communicate about it. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I've been, this is something I've noticed since I've been way, way back in the two thousands with the integral community, just the, the, the lack of people of color, the lack of, uh, women creators, right? Like there's just been, there's just been a lack. And I think part of this, I mean, part of the reason with growing down, like two of the three of our, of our, of our trio uh, are, are people of color. I'm a Mexican American, right? So 
um, we've been trying to do a sort of a counterbalance to that, but I do think you're right in, in, the, in the sense that we, in order to do the work, I think it, we actually have to go out of our way. Like you're saying, like it may be a little awkward to kind of like try to make things balanced at mm -hmm. first, but I don't see any other effective transient strategy in the interim uh, to actually kind of propagate and promote and create space for because just not doing it and just kind of not acknowledging it or at least or just saying that we care about it and then going on with just a plethora of just white dudes talking to each other on podcasts about you know meta theories you know there, there's a kind of comedy behind it after a while so yeah, I, I don't have all, uh, a good answer for this question either, but it, except we have to just show up and attempt, you know, and, and, and try to represent better, so. We can think of this as part of the, you know, evolution is beautiful, but it's not pretty. Like, it might just look fake and weird for a while, and we might, like, overshoot a little bit in the, in, in just, in, the, in our process of, like, groping around to find our way, but, like, we care about where we're trying to go here, so it's worth it. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like you're in, you're speaking in a macro sense of the whole cultural dynamics right now, because that's sort of what writ large has been happening, right? There's the critiques against the left have been, oh, you guys are going too far. And then yeah. even misunderstandings of the left have been, oh, you want everyone just to be like flat and equal and you don't want anyone to have excellent, you know, all of those kind of straw manning of the left have been sort of against that argument. But I think an integral perspective helps us keep that in context that this is really um, a transitional phase that really needs to happen. And, and I actually have kind of like a theory about that. Like I actually wonder sometimes if going too far with green, like overzealous green is actually what creates enough potential energy to propel us into second tier. Like it's no accident that second tier comes after green. So maybe, you know, and maybe I'm just trying to like tie a bow on it or something, but I, I mean, I do, I, I do feel like there might be a pot, there just is a possibility that like we have to engender an enormous backlash in a way in order to like make the biggest, basically what is the biggest leap in the history of the evolution of human consciousness. Yeah, so. I think that's a good theory, to be honest. We need to dive into that for like a whole other episode. <laughs> well, I think we're circling around a pretty good target. Um, Ryan, you, you brought up a, I'm interested when you talked about what perspective when Wilbur was bringing up that you said, well, screw that. I'm just kind of going to go to, you know, start my own podcast. And Jeremy, you've also talked about, I know in your Gepser community and I know on the Stoa, it seems to be a little bit more balanced as far as male and female. And I guess going back to my original question to Stephanie is, do you think there's something, for example, I don't think integral excludes women, but my, my question is, there's something more an integral community can do to seduce or attract women into it? Um, I think just find them and invite them. I think we, I mean, I think we can come up with all kinds of ideas about like, I don't know, like whether there's something inherent to integral or to women or to femininity. I, I don't even know if those are like interesting or worth, I don't know. I, I mean, to me, it's just like, if it's something you care about, you know, f find the women. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what I did. You know, I was like, I want to do an episode about women in the integral slash game B space, you know? So I'm just gonna, I first reached out to Bonita Roy and from, and like, yeah, there is, there is, there is a lot there. There's like a lot under the surface. And I, I, I actually think that, um, um, I, 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 um, I, I think I mentioned this on the discord, the, um, the Harvard business review did this thing a, a couple years ago where they asked all the like top business leaders, like who the, who the thinkers are that they most look to. And the names that came back are like business thinkers that we all know. And then they asked those people, who are the thinkers that you look to? And then they got this list of people that like no one had ever heard of. And I think if you did that within this context, you would actually find a lot of women on that like second tier, set le second level up list who are less like prominent, like on the media circuit, you know, but are very much like producing 
the, a lot of the ideas that a lot of the thinking that we're, 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 we're using and integrating and then being spoken about by more by white men <laughs> on a lot of these shows. So I would say, yeah, just look for them, look for them and find them. And invite so it them. sounds like you've done a show on that, uh, Reckonings or Lunchbox? We, we, we did, we did, we had a conversation and then, um, but it was, it's like, it, it, there's actually just so much here. It, it was, it felt more like an internal conversation between five of us then it felt like um, something that I, I like made sense to like release publicly yet. Um, but we're, we're, I mean, it's a conversation that's ongoing. It just hasn't, hasn't like been aired, but it, the, it's, it, the, I think there's like a lot under the surface here with this topic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a loaded one too, because I know la uh, last week we interviewed uh, or at least earlier this week, Rabbi Michael Lerner, and he was, in his book, Revolutionary Love, he's talking about the left can't just start canceling out people, because he was talking a lot about how uh, white men don't feel accepted in this group, and therefore just kind of went to the right, because, well, F you, you know, if I'm privileged, and da, 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 and I don't have a space here, and you don't want me here, then I won't be here, so I, I think it's, talk about earlier with Jeremy's oscillation, really kind of being able to balance both of these things, and trying to find like, where is that sweet spot? Good topic. For sure. So, Steph, where can people find you online? People can find me on Twitter, at Steph Lepp. People can find Reckonings wherever they listen, wherever you listen, and at reckonings.show. Uh, and people can find Infinite Lunchbox wherever they listen, although I think it's better better to watch, and that would just be youtube.com slash C slash Infinite Lunchbox. Fantastic. Thanks so much for being on the show. This was great. We're going to have to have you back on you. frequently. Yeah. There's so much to talk about. I agree. Yeah, let's keep going. Let's continue at some point. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, so Stephanie. Much, Stephanie.